higher ground, you never know what's in store. Explore, explore, explore. Explore, explore, explore. Hey fellow explorers, today we're going to talk about bees and beekeeping. Bees are beautiful little creatures that spend their whole lives flying around, working very, very hard, pollinating all the different flowers that you see. And there are many, many different types of bees, but today we're going to focus on honeybees. And bees are, you know, they, when, they, when they get together, they form what's called a colony, and, and they, they live in what's called a hive. And today, uh, beekeepers have, um, they actually have, not the hives that you see out in the wild, like you might see like in a tree or something, they have these boxes. And today we're going to visit a, a beekeeper who has two hives. And we're going to see how the process of how these bees are making honey, how they're living together, and how they're making honey. So let's go check that out, okay? So today we're meeting with the beekeeper. Her name is Taylor Capazello, and she has two hives. And she's going to help us learn all about bees today. So Taylor, do you have anything you want to tell us before we get going? Um, no, I think it's just more fun to see than to, you know, learn with our hands and see what's going on in there. I agree. So let's get going. I'm going to put on an outfit. You can check me out. I'm going to put on a beekeeping outfit. And I'm kind of, kind of excited about this. I've never done this before. Something new for me. So I'm really excited. So let's go check it out. So this is a beekeeper outfit. She has a protection for the head, protection for the body. It has a nice, thick, thick uh, material to help you. So in case of bees, now bees generally don't sting you, but sometimes they mistake you for attacking them. They might sting you. So when you're trying to get the honey out, they might think you're attacking them. That's why you have a nice, thick material to protect you from the bee sting. So I'm going to put this on right now. And while I'm putting on my beekeeping outfit, you can see that Taylor is busy heating up one of the tools she'll use when she opens up the hive. Okay, my suit is on. And I'll zip it up. And when I'm ready, I'll pop the hood on. Let's go here. And let's get going. I'll get my gloves and we'll get going. Okay, so here we are. So Taylor now is going to use her smoke. Uh, what's that called? The actual word for that? Yeah, it's just the smoker. The yeah. smoker. She's going to help get in there and get the honey out and use the smoker. And now tell us why do you use a smoker when you're doing that? So the smoker actually just calms them down. Um, it makes it so they usually want to go in and have some more honey. Um, the other reason why a smoker is good is that if you do get stung by a bee, which can happen, or even just kill a bee accidentally, a pheromone's released. And that makes it so other bees want to sting too. So that's where um, the hive mentality is. So say I put a frame down and it smushes a bee accidentally. So instead of the bees smelling something, thinking they're attacked, it calms them down oh. so they don't notice that I accidentally smushed it. Very smart. Yeah. And there's a tip for you guys. Don't smash bees because if you do, you may think it's just one bee, but that smell when you smash it actually will attract other bees to come and sting you. So. But you shouldn't be hurting bees just anyway. Just if you're in a hive. <laughs> you, won't, you won't be bad if in life. Well, it's not good to hurt bees anyway, so we don't want to do that. Hey. So, here's honey. So we see on this that it's just solid. Look at one bee's in there just sticking his, her head <laughs> all the way in. But see, this is how it is. And so later when we do it for uh, uncapping honey, we basically just remove this whole wax foundation and it'll look like these holes right here. And then the honey comes out of that. And these holes, if you notice, they're all what's called a hexagon shape. And that's actually the perfect shape for having structural integrity. That's why the bees do it. They just know it naturally. I'll just put this one out here so I have a little bit of room to move around in here. And so this particular one up here is pretty much all. I just went through the hive the other day, so there's not too much going on up here. They're cleaning up, trying to see if I can find any male bees for you to show you the difference between them. But they're likely going to be a little bit lower in the hive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this box and set it down and we'll go one more deeper. And now, now she mentioned trying to find a male bee. You may or may not know this, but all the workers, any worker you see flying around pollinating flowers, those are all females. All the workers are all female bees. So anytime you see a bee, don't say, well, there he is. Say, there she is, because you know it's a she. Right now, let's go and check out the bee song from Kyle Bain. Hey Kyle, let's hear the bee song. About one third of the food that we eat was pollinated by honeybees. 
short life, they do their part And without them life would get real hard The wings can be 200 times a second And that's why you hear a buzz Honeybees, honeybees They buzz, buzz, buzz and while them and their cousins keep busy Honeybees, honeybees You gotta love, love, love them cause they're so important to you and to me Sure store a lot of things Like water, nectar, pollen And their babies Called larvae In one trip they use Superpowers By visiting up to One hundred flowers A worker bee Can carry quite the load Got half of her weight stuck into her legs. Honeybees, honeybees. The buzz, buzz, buzzing while them and the cousins keep busy. Honeybees, honeybees. You gotta love, love, love them cause they're so important. Survives and keeps making honey. Gotta make lots of honey. Honeybees, honeybees. They're buzz, buzz, buzzing while them and their cousins keep busy. so important to you and to me you gotta love 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 them cause they're so important to you and to me I sometimes overbuild a little bit of wax so I always like to kind of clean it off because they are worker bees and they just like to keep working all the time. So if you don't give them something to do, they will find something to do. Let's see, that one also is. I just unfortunately had gone through all this and I added frames on here, so. We might have to go one deeper. This is what it looks like when you first start and they build off of it. There's a couple ways that Oh, they're not very happy with that, with the wind. There's a couple ways that, that you can buy it. You can buy it so you put a wax foundation there, plastic, or it's completely empty and they'll build off of it. So wow. here's actually, so you can see. Already, this wow, one. Wow, see them building. See, isn't that amazing the way now? That, that's just instinct. They build that based on instinct. That's mm -hmm. amazing. So they'll just build that and then they'll pack it full of honey, pollen, or baby bees, whichever they need. So it's just, yeah. And the honey that you, that you and I eat, actually, the bees oh, no. eat that too. They actually, they, they feed their babies the honey, don't they? Um, yeah, they feed their babies some royal jelly, um, a little bit of pollen, and some honey, yeah. So I'll go down. And I've heard, one. now is it true, I've heard honey is actually a combination of pollen and bee spit, is that correct? Um, it is a combination of nectar, fermented nectar. Fermented nectar. And yeah, the bees then throw it up. 
<laughs> That's a, see, a fact you may not, may or may not have known, but it tastes, it tastes good. It may be beef throat, but it still tastes good. So we're, we're eating beef throat, but it tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go down one further so we can actually get to some baby bees so you can actually see how it is. So. That's also why bees, if you, I mean, if you're, if you're like a year old or younger, right. you shouldn't be eating honey because, because the bees are spitting it up. They actually, there's a, they have a special uh, bacteria that helps them to break down the pollen and make the honey. Um, and as adults, we can, we can eat that bacteria and that's fine. But as a one year old or less, um, because the immune system is still developing, they can't really have honey because of that bacteria that's in the honey that, that helps them to, to break it down. So that's why I mentioned that. Okay. So we see here I have to break out some of the honey because there's a lot been, of thick honey in there, yeah. Wow. They start building. Start connecting them together, huh? Yeah. So that's part of your job as a beekeeper. So that's why Taylor has big, strong muscles in her arms. She has to stick there and, and really muscle that thing in there. Yeah, so I might want to actually open up the other hive for some baby bees. But we'll see what I pull out of this one. So some workers go around and pollinate flowers, and some workers take care of the babies. Yeah, this one's still all honey. But you can see that the honey got ripped open right here. Oh, ah, yeah. It. And that's what we see in the supermarket. Beautiful golden honey. Now, I've sometimes I've seen in stores where they say, like, um, this honey is like clover honey, or this is orange blossom honey. Now, how can they tell uh, what type of honey, I, what, where it comes from? In order for it to be a pure honey, it has to be set down in the middle of a farm, somewhere that that's all they're doing. Nice. So, a lot of times, a lot of those things aren't entirely pure. In San Francisco, it's pretty impossible to have it. Now, you will notice that during certain seasons, you'll have things that have hints of more flavors, like more fennel, more eucalyptus, things like that. But, but they can't guarantee it's 100%, right? It's... Yeah. So. Okay, let's see what so many bees, it's amazing you open it up and you see all these bees and they're just busy working the whole time. Yeah, and if we'd open this up and because it's hot out right now, there's less bees in here because a lot of them are out foraging. So, you just sit right there. <laughs> so, this hive is going to be a little bit more active because... There's more honey in this hive one. Yeah, and I have to break some of it and they don't like that. But have you noticed, as much as, as Taylor has been poking around and lifting and, and messing with all the bees, none of them have, have tried to sting her. Basically, bees, again, you know, bees are very, are, are very gentle creatures. I mean, I know they have stingers attached to them, but, but they don't want to sting you. I mean, if they sting you, actually, the, the stinger pulls, pulls their body parts out and they die. So they don't want to sting you. They only sting you when they attack. So as long as you're, you're kind to them and you're not afraid of them, you don't try to swat them away, they won't bother you. So be aware of that. There's no need to fear bees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most people usually just get stung because they accidentally are running barefoot through somewhere and they step on them. So, remember how I said some frames actually oh, don't have what? anything? So this one they just build straight down. See how that is? Wow. So, I always do a mix of them. So, and look at how many the... bees are. <laughs> No, it's nice. I guess it gives them a variety, right? So they don't kind of get bored. Yeah. The same thing. Shake them off. <laughs> just don't want them going down your shirt and getting stuck. They just don't like being stuck in things. They panic then, basically. Yeah. We can't blame them. But this hive is a new hive over here. So the other one actually, I, the hive split the other week. Ah, here's some brood. Oh, okay. Okay. So, let's see if you can get in here. See how it's capped? So, in this corner over here, that's honey. That looks different. And then when we look at the other ones, well, I can't really point to them. So. Yeah, these ones right in here? Yep, that is all baby bees. Oh, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can see. So, these ones are popped. This one, they hatched them right there. They're sticking yep. out, right? Wow. Yeah. So, and then we got the honey on the sides. Now, when they're born, are they born um, like without wing? I mean, how are these like little like 
Like larvae or without wings or how, when they're born, what do they look like when they're born? They, they just look a little smaller and they're called nurse bees and they stay in the hive and they take care of other, all the larvae then. Oh, so wow. You can see the pollen on this one on yes, the leg. Yes, look at the, wow, mm -hmm. she has a lot of pollen on her leg. Yeah, so I'm trying to look through and see if I can find some male drones for you guys because they look different. So the male bees are different. This one has a little head, or her head stuck right now. Yep, they're eating honey. That's it. You see their little bee butts. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It is funny. So actually, what's interesting, let me put this down in the corner so I can point out. We see there was one that had a mite on her. And that's one of the big problems that we're having with bees right now is the mite problem. Let me see if I can find her again. I literally saw it. It's not a good sign. <laughs> so, so mites are parasites. Right. Yes, and they a, are. And yeah. a parasite is a creature that that gets onto another creature and lives off it, um, and in doing so, it actually gradually kills off the, 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 the it's called the host. The parasite gets on the host and kills it, and that can happen in many, many different types of animals. But in bees, there are you know, these little mites that get on there, and that's a problem because obviously you want to keep bees alive because they're helping to pollinate um, many many flowers, and the mites help uh, help kill them off. It's very bad, and there's actually there's a there's a thing called um, colony collapse going on, not just in, in the United States, but around the world, actually. And it's a big issue. And, um, well, folks like Taylor are actually helping provide bees a place to, to survive, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of bees have been, been slowly dying off, and so we have to make sure that we do our best to, to protect them. Beautiful. Wow, look at that. Isn't that amazing? So this one has... That is amazing. Gorgeous larva on it. And you actually zoom in, you can see the larva that's not capped yet. Do you see that on the ends? Oh, yeah. yeah. See how it's like little white things in yeah, there? Yeah, oh, The bees are grabbing yeah. out there. They saw me pointing to them. That is uncapped larva. That is so they're amazing. In there them. This is all the larva that we're seeing. Yeah, you can this see. This is how. You see right in there? You see the, see the white right inside there? Those are little babies. Those are little larvas. And they haven't capped those yet. And so when they're babies, they give them a little bit of royal jelly. So I, now I thought royal jelly was just for the queen, but now it's actually for all the babies. Mm -hmm. See, I learned something new. I did not know that. Yeah, the, the queen just gets a lot more of them. Look, I'm going to look in here and see if I can find the queen. She's kind of hard to find because she's just a longer bee <laughs> in this. But you sometimes you can find her. Some people are really good at spotting the queen. It's not my forte. Now, is the queen active? Does she move around or is she kind of like... Yeah, she moves around. She moves around in the lower areas. Her only job is laying eggs, making baby bees. Yeah, I have some friends that are just really good queen spotters and can just pick it up and find it. That's okay. We don't have to see the queen. We know, we know what the queen does. And like you said, I don't want to, don't want to risk but, hurting her. Okay, well then I'll close this one up. I always like to put everything back on in the same order. So this hive isn't too strong right now. Sometimes in the summer, we'll open this up and it'll just be packed with bees. Wow. So. Now, now how long, what's the average lifespan of a bee? So average bee actually lives only about six weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah, 45 days. So um, a lot of times when we're seeing bees out in the in the world, they're, they're at the end of their lifespan. So their first couple weeks of being alive, they're nurse bees and they take care of all the baby bees in there. They feed, wow. them, the, they feed them the royal jelly, honey, things like that. Yeah. And then as they get older, then they start becoming guard bees. And the guard bees are the ones that if anything's happening, come out, check everything out. And then they become the actual ones that Fly come out and are uh, searching and bringing in pollen and nectar for the honey after that, so. So whenever yeah. we see a worker bee flying around, it's kind of like the third job at that point, right? So yep, wow. yeah, it's the end of their life, so. And again, more facts I did not know before. See, it's interesting. See, you should always talk to beekeepers, you learn more things about bees. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, I always learn so much more about bees as well. If someone was interested, say, in, in doing this themselves, yeah. um, how would they go about becoming a beekeeper? How, I mean, how do you obtain bees, and how do you, how do you start this? Well, there, so I definitely recommend contacting your local beekeeper association. So I'm vice president of San Francisco Beekeeper Association. And it's a really great group because every, almost everywhere has them. And uh, it's, 
Usually we'll meet monthly and we'll talk to other beekeepers. You get to ask questions. Oh, are your bees doing this yet? What do I do if this is? Because something new is going to come up that you haven't seen. Sure. And maybe someone there has. And we have speakers that come from around. And it's just a really fabulous way to actually learn. And they do workshops. So that's my main thing is actually reaching out to your local beekeeper association. Um, we buy boxes of bees through it. You get discounts for doing it that way. And you have people usually that will come out and help you set it up. Yeah. So it's a really great way to that's get awesome. to know your community. And so you can find your local beekeeper association online, basically? You just kind of look yeah, online. I would just look up whatever county you're in or around it. A couple of them don't have it, but I mean, I know around here, I talk to, oh, I mean, there's Santa Cruz, San Mateo, Marin, uh, I, I mean, so yeah. several. That's great. Now, yeah. is, there, is there a time of year um, when when you're really active and there's a time of year when the, the bees aren't doing anything, yeah. they're hibernating or something? Yeah, or so they just, they're, they are, uh, insects of the sun so if you think of it that way mm -hmm. uh, in the summertime that's when they're most active in the spring they just start getting really excited they start the hives start getting bigger flowers are blooming their jobs are starting to happen and then all summer they do that and then the winter when it starts to get cold they start hibernating and they come in mm -hmm. here because it's sunny all year long we have beekeeping all year in February. Basically, yeah. Uh, but anywhere that has snow, they're actually going to go in, and, and they're not going to leave while yeah. it's snowing. So that's great. Yeah. So they basically that's, that's so the honey like that's, that's like their stored food, then, right? They eat that over the winter time, yeah. and when spring comes out, they go make it more. Right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that and the and the pollen, which is protein for them. Yeah, so, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, one more thing. Now we well, we talked about like um, you said the hive split. So what again? What happens in the hive split? How does that work? Okay, so if you think about it like an apartment, and in this apartment. So, Say you have a whole bunch of people living with you, and all of a sudden there's just no more floor space for anybody else. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, everybody in the house is like, oh, "Okay, this is we're we're too packed." Yeah. So that's why your job as a beekeeper is to keep adding more space, removing and building up, building up. Yeah. Yes. So they keep wanting to think they have more room in sure. their apartment. But if they feel like their apartment's completely full, then they're going to do what's called a split, and. They are going to lay new baby queens, mm -hmm. and then half the hive is going to leave with the original oh, queen, wow. and then the new baby queens will be born, and they sort out who's the queen. Mm -hmm. And so now we have an old hive with new with a new queen, mm -hmm. and then the old queen has flown somewhere with half the hive. Now, if start. now if you put up say like a, say an empty hive box next to it, would the old queen go there, or does she kind of just normally just sort of fly far away? Well. Usually not, but it can happen, and it did happen to me this year. So oh, that's great. I was extremely great. lucky on that. Oh, that was great. <laughs> but, awesome. But that's like winning the lottery. <laughs> um, some people will put up other, maybe other hives that have some uh, certain smells in it. They really like dirty comb because mm -hmm. it smells familiar to them. Okay. So they might put up what they're called, you know, traps or, you know, so um, I could put this box with an entrance on it with some dirty comb somewhere and then maybe a swarm will move into it. Wow. Um, so that's one way. That's uh, that's the easy way to catch a swarm. Um, or they might decide to just go sit in that tree <laughs> and then go somewhere further. They're not going to fly too far. They'll usually be about in a block or two radius. So, so they can come by and visit them, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been a while. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah, you hope maybe you're like, okay, now move back. <laughs> yeah, now come back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's awesome. That's, I'm glad that you had to. Now you get two. So, so before you only had the one, and you split. That's how you get two. Well, yeah. So I mean, I've always usually keep up two hives, but I have sometimes one will die off because oh, okay. of roa mites or something else. But um, you never really know. We're, we're making a guess. Yeah. Sure. Uh, when something has died off. Um, but uh, yeah. So I'll have it sitting here for that for that reason, and it actually worked this time. So that was that's pretty great. exciting. <laughs> now, do, now, do bees have any sort of like um, natural enemies or anything? Or the, apart from the mites, I mean, what yeah. what kind of things like a sort of attack bees out in the wild? Um, well, blue jays. Blue jays. Uh, yeah. I mean, all 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 birds, anything. They're insects, and so uh, oh, raccoons, possums. They'll sit right at the entrance and just grab <laughs> grab them as they come out. So um, you gotta kind of kind of guard your own hives, then I imagine. Right? Yeah, yeah. So a stronger hive doesn't usually have to worry about it as much. Um, but, you know, the ecosystem can be pretty nice because bees will naturally die off and they'll pick the, they'll, they'll, they're also very clean um, 
They're very clean, and so they, if they have any uh, dead bees in their hive, they're going to want to kick them out, you know? And so then the Blue Jays will come and just eat all of those. Okay. So, so it works together. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, it all, everybody has different ways of, of working with the ecosystem, so. See, she's just crawling around, figuring out where to go. Oh, she's just you curious. Sure. Oh, you just, let's see, you're there you there go. go. She's like, where the heck am I at now? <laughs> yeah, that was a nice honeycomb, and now I'm stuck in this red, red cloth here. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? Bees are so beautiful. What's nice is when they're like this too. It's pretty. You can, if you see a bee on the ground, most likely, if you don't, if you're not too worried about it, and you know you're not allergic to bees, you can always just put your finger out. And a lot of times. She'll just climb right up on it. She won't do anything. So, yeah, she often does because I see insects. I mean, obviously, certain in, certain insects you know, like uh, you know, black widow, I wouldn't. But most insects, you know, I, yeah, I'll put my hand down, let them crawl. And yeah. Generally, insects in general generally don't want to attack you for no reason. Mm -hmm. well, I even saw a picture uh, on an entomology group the other day of someone holding a black widow. So. Oh really? Like, yeah, they were a biologist. So I well, suppose if you know how to approach them, yeah, I don't, yeah. so I won't be trying <laughs> it. But. Exactly. <laughs> In the guts here tonight, I wouldn't try that, but that's, you know, still, it's, And no. then with them, as you saw, you know, I just shook the bees off, and so when you want them off, they just flick off, put them down, however, yeah. they just, if you flick them, they just kind of fly through the air, so, yeah. That's great. We're all... Well, thank you, Taylor, for, yes. for taking the time to show us about uh, beekeeping and bees today. This is Definitely. awesome. Definitely. Well, guys, I hope you learned something today, and uh, I learned a lot today myself. This is pretty awesome. I'm so glad. That Taylor allowed us to come and, you know, this is actually, this is her house. She actually, you can see the view out here is beautiful and she has, uh, and there are a lot of, a lot of areas right here where the, the bees can go and get pollen and it's a, if you live in an area where you have a lot of trees and a lot of flowers, it's a great thing. Maybe if you can, if you can, if you can do it, get your parents to do it, to maybe start a small colony and see what, what happens. But it's really, a, it looks like a really fun thing and I was really excited. It's kind of a really cool thing. Now, let's go and check out the bee song one more time, but this time, Let's hear it with a little bit of animation in it. Let's check it out. About one third of the food that we eat was pollinated by honeybees. In their short life, they do their part. Without them, life would get real hard. The wings can be 200 times a second, and that's why you hear a buzz. Honeybees, honeybees. They buzz, 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 and while them and their cousins keep busy. Honeybees, honeybees You gotta love, love, love them Cause they're so important to you and to me The honeycombs sure store a lot of things Like water, nectar, pollen and their babies Called larvae in one trip Superpowers by visiting up to one hundred flowers. A worker bee can carry quite the load of pollen. She's got half of her weight sticking to her legs. Honey bees, honey bees. Buzz, buzz, buzzing while them and the cousins keep busy. Honeybees, honeybees. You gotta love, love, love them, cause they're so important to you and to me. And then there is the queen. She makes all the bees. She eats royal jelly. Royal Jelly She's the MJ 
engine of the hive Making sure the hive survives And keeps making honey Gotta make lots of honey Cousins keep busy Honeybees Honeybees You gotta love, love, love them Cause they're so important to you And to me You gotta love, love, love them Cause they're so important to you And to me Well, fellow explorers, I hope you learned a lot today. I sure did. We learned all about bees and beekeeping and what a fantastic hobby it is. And for some people, it's actually a full-fledged business. And we learned how much use the bees are to the world. So right now, though, I think we've learned enough. Now it's time for my favorite part of every one of my videos, my Explore Roar. So here we go. Ready? Now do it, right? You make the X on your chest and let it all out. Explore! Ah, oh, that felt good. I think I saw a bee fly by too. I think the bees like that. <laughs> All right, guys. So remember, next time you want to see some more of my videos, check me out at X S P L O O R Explore. Just check me out and hit my subscribe button while you're at it. I need all the subscribers I can get to keep me going. All right, guys. I'll check you out next week. See you then. Bye bye. Wait, 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 wait. One more thing, fellow explorers. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button. I can really use your help. I do this for fun, so I'm not getting paid, but if you can hit that subscribe button, that helps me out. You know what else you can do? You can come visit my website, explore.com. That's right, X-S-P-L-O-O-R.com. I have some really cool things on there just for you. And you can also check me out on Instagram, on Twitter, even on Pinterest, and of course on Facebook. And even better than all of that, I have two free contests going on right now. What's the first one? Well, check this out. What are those? Explore Yo-Yo's official Explore Yo-Yo's official Duncan brand official Explore Yo-Yo. You can't beat that. And you can also win <gasps> these. These are my official Explore hats. They have my Explore Circle logo in the front. On the side of the bill, it says Explore. In the back, it has the Explore icon from my website. Pretty cool, huh? Free again, one every month. You can buy them on the website. You win one free every month if you sign up and register, okay? I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Hey fellow explorers, I need subscribers to stay on the air, so please hit that subscribe button down below. Thank you. See you next time fellow explorers. Take care.